Chicago, the city of broad shoulders, the metropolis of the Midwest, and as it happens, the location of Reverb HQ. For over a century, Chicago artists and labels have created truly distinctive forms of popular music, from blues and jazz to hip hop and alternative rock. I've got one day and miles and miles of city to cover, so I've called my fellow Reverb guitar slinger, Joe Shadded, to help show me where to go and what to see. Hey, Andy. Hey, Joe. Good to see you. Thanks, man. Welcome to Chicago. Thanks so much. It's nice to be in your hometown. Yes. This place is massive, and I have no idea where to start. Are, yeah. there, are there guitar shops up in the skyscrapers? <laughs> or? We're in the loop right now, and this is kind of the postcard version of Chicago, I would say. Right. But outside of the loop, there are many wonderful neighborhoods that each have their own characteristics and their own history and their own vibe, and they offer so much. Well, it sounds like we need to get out of the loop and into those neighborhoods. Then. Yeah, I mean, the loop's got some good stuff, but any Chicago musician would probably tell you the same thing. Get out of the loop. Okay, well, I guess we should get going. It's the Guitarist Guide to Chicago. And so we left the beautiful Chicago Loop with its tall buildings and L trains and ventured to the near south side to an area well known as Motor Row. Named for the multitude of automobile showrooms once located here in the early 20th century, we instead found one of Chicago's most sacred musical sites, 2120 South Michigan Avenue, the original Chess Records office and recording studio. Now known as Willie Dixon's Blues Heaven Foundation, director Janine Judge was kind enough to show us around this incredible place, now in the process of being lovingly restored to its original condition. From the mid-50s to 1967, artists such as Muddy Waters, Chuck Berry, Howlin' Wolf, Etta James, Bo Diddley, and countless others defined what would be known as Chicago blues and laid the foundation for rock and roll. The vibe in this building is palpable. I almost expected to see Leonard or Phil Chess inside their offices. We made our way back to the original packing and shipping area, now outfitted as a special photo exhibit. It turns out the Rolling Stones, whose name was taken from a Muddy Waters lyric, found their way over to record in these sacred confines in 1964. Well, wow, take a, this is a great shot of the studio here, all in one room. Oh, wow. There's even an instrumental on their 12 by five record called 2120 South Michigan Avenue. The door where all the musicians came through, they would park in the alley and use this back door because it was more convenient for them to unload their gear. The stairs are a little off kilter. Imagine them carrying those old tube amps up. Oh. And, and the handrail, as I said, is original. So as you go up, make sure you rub a little bit of mojo off the handrail. We're doing it, Andy. There's, there's de a definite <laughs> presence here. We're doing it. So with a little residue mojo on our hands, wow. we moved upstairs where we met another important member of the Blues Heaven oh, Foundation, that? Jackie Dixon. So you're, 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 you're part of the legacy here. You're part of the right. family. You are, yeah. I'm Willie Dixon's youngest daughter of 12 Willie Dixon's 12 youngest children. daughter. Okay. Wow. And I'm the president and CEO of Blues Heaven Foundation. Okay. Jackie's father, Willie Dixon, was a bass player, guitarist, singer, and producer one of the most influential at chess. He was also one of the most prolific songwriters of his time, writing countless blues staples such as Hoochie Coochie Man, Little Red Rooster, and Spoonful. His signature writing style would influence generations of musicians from all genres. The rehearsal space or where they would actually record? This is where the recordings were done. Okay. Where the wood paneling is, this was a separate room, so there was a wall that separated the space, okay. and there was two doors here where the walls aren't parallel and the, the ceiling is vaulted here, that was where the recordings were done. And so it was the vortex of the uneven walls and unparalleled floors that created the vortex that created the unique chess sound. Absolutely. Wow. Amazing. So this is where a lot of the magic was made. They do wow. the recordings here. Uh, one thing that we, we didn't cover, and it's kind of hard to see, but there's two pipes here and that was part of the echo chamber. So they would drop a mic from the second level here into the basement. And there was an area of the rooms, a little smaller than this, that was sectioned off with aluminum paneling so that the sound would reverb. So can we maybe play a couple of those instruments out Absolutely. there? Absolutely. Guitar or piano or something? We'd love that. Yeah. You down? I'm would, down, are you, are you busy? Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Oh. We cut a chess record. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's go listen to back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just up the street on Wabash, you'll find Buddy Guy's Legends, an essential Chicago stop for any blues lover. Not only is there live blues daily, Buddy still plays shows every year around his birthday. Up north in Lakeview, there's also Kingston Mines and Blues, both right across the street from each other on Halstead. The Pilsen neighborhood is one of the most vibrant in the city. It has an eclectic mix of shops, restaurants, and art galleries, mostly located on 18th Street. Check out Pinwheel Records right under the CTA Pink Line. There's also Shady Rest Vintage and Vinyl, a cozy shop with a focus in vintage stereo equipment. Then there's 606 Records for a slightly more electronic feel. Directly across the street is the Regal Thalia Hall, a newly rehabbed opera house with lots of vintage charm and history. Also, don't forget to grab some barbecue and small band jazz at Honky Tonk. Wicker Park, Bucktown, Ukrainian Village. This trio of neighborhoods sits just to the northwest of downtown, and they were Joe and I's next stop. All right, so Joe, you've taken me to the famous Wicker Park Bucktown neighborhood. Here we are. I've heard a lot about this place. I guess since the 90s, it's been sort of a, you know, a place for creative expression. Totally. Yeah, this, this has been a neighborhood where many artists, musicians, uh, gallerists with these artist lofts, uh, chefs, all people flock to this neighborhood over the last 20 years or so. It has changed a lot, uh, even in the last 10 years that I've been here. Well, yeah, you mentioned changes. Uh, we're right here at the site of the former Double Door uh, Club. I mean, yeah. what can you tell me about that place? It's yeah, I mean, the Double Door. We lost the Double Door. Wilco played there, Liz Fair played there, the Rolling Stones played there. But there are plenty of other awesome venues that are doing great things too. Empty Bottle right down the street, a great punk rock club. Subterraneans right here as well. And so there still is a vibrant, expressive spirit here, which is, you know, which is what we got to keep going. Yes. <laughs> Uh, there's also a wonderful guitar shop that I used to teach at right around the corner. You really? want to check it out? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Just a short walk down North Avenue, and we are at Joe's Old Stomping Grounds, a cozy little storefront called Avenue and Guitars. My old boss. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hello, Joe. <laughs> Phil, good How's to see you, man. Good to see you, Joe. How this is you? Andy. Hey, Andy. Andy. Nice to meet you. How are you? Sure. So we've been here since 2006. Um, named the store Avenue N because we're on North Avenue in my old neighborhood on the south side. The streets were Avenue A, Avenue B, Avenue C, Avenue E. So we gave it an old school name and that was part of the thinking of uh, merchandising here was trying to make it look like a stepping back in time a little bit, like some of the old stores. Yeah. The storefronts are actually intentional trying to be like Hesse's in Liverpool where the Beatles okay. used to shop. Yeah. There's some old pictures of their two front windows of very similar you know, size and how we merchandise the front, so. Uh, oh wait, so you're a Beatles fan? A little bit. You, you, might, see, you might see some Beatles stuff in a store. <laughs> and yeah, I have, um, I have a nice collection of uh, 60s guitars. A lot of them are Beatle themed. I've got, so, I've got a quite extensive collection of Rickenbacker guitars. So this is a 1958 Rickenbacker Capri. The Capri models were the hollow bodies with the, with the fins. Uh, whether it had dots or inlays, they're still called the Capri series. This, is, this would be called a 360. This is still mono. In 59, it became stereo. Wow. Uh, only four knobs, uh, two, the two toaster pickups. This is an original um, trapeze tailpiece. But the rare thing about this guitar is the color. This is called Autumn Glow, not Fire Glow. Yeah, that looks, that's fire what's really stood like out to me. Fire Glow is more like orange-red uh, right. color that they continued with over the years. And Autumn one glow. of the classic, the Fire Glow, yeah. you know, became so, so classic. So, this is a 1959, so the following year. And uh, the only difference in this model is it's the Bound model. So it's a 360 with an extra pickup. So you add 10, it's a 360. 70, and when it has a vibrato, that would be a five at the end, so that's actually a 375. That is um, a vibrato. That wow. is what Rickenbacker oh, wow. would put on uh, most of their models. That's called the Kaufman vibrato. It's an awful vibrato. It has this long, <laughs> weird spoon type thing to push it, and it goes sideways. And I, I wire them shut because they're really unusable. Okay. If you break a string on that thing, forget it. <laughs> so I don't wow. really use them. They look cool. One, two, three, four.
So after taking a trip back in time with a few Rickenbackers, we strolled down Milwaukee Avenue, the main thoroughfare of Wicker Park. There are dozens of restaurants, bars, and boutique stores densely packed on this street, but one in particular caught my eye. Oh, hey Joe, why does that street sign look familiar to me? This was the storefront from uh, Championship Vinyl from High Fidelity. Oh, okay. So that's in the movie. Well, where's the vinyl <laughs> shop? Ah, come on, let's keep walking. Okay. <laughs> okay, so Championship Vinyl doesn't actually exist, but just a little further down, we found two incredible and fully functional record stores, Reckless Records and Sugar Records, each with enough selection to keep you perusing for hours. Just down Damon Avenue in the nearby Ukrainian Village neighborhood, there's the dimly lit, wood-paneled Rainbow Club. While they don't sell records, they do have a photo booth where Liz Fair famously snapped her Exile and Guyville album cover. Down Division Street, there's Phyllis's Musical Inn. Just as the name implies, you could hear anything from country and garage rock to big band jazz, or just enjoy its spacious beer garden. Apart from being an awesome, divey neighborhood watering hole, Phyllis's also holds the distinction of being the oldest venue still operating in Wicker Park. Logan Square. As Wicker Park has changed, many of its younger and more artistically minded residents moved northwest to the Logan Square and Avondale neighborhoods. With about three bars per person, there's plenty to keep you busy and entertained. All right, so Joe, we just came uh, walking from Milwaukee Avenue, and I'm kind of getting the impression I want to hang out here. It's a really cool vibe, lots of cool shops. So what can you tell me about this neighborhood? Yeah, this is great. This is a cool part of town, Logan Square, Avondale neighborhoods. There's tons of bars, restaurants, uh, record shops, venues, but we're at Brick and Brac Records. We can find some great Chicago local vinyl in here. Let's see what they got. All right, let's go. <laughs> Esoteric vintage collectibles to records and cassettes and live music, Brick a Brack is kind of like a sugar high, nostalgia fueled 90s kids sleepover, but with plenty of current and local music to bite into. Speaking of which, Joe and I had worked up quite an appetite, so we trekked north to Kuma's Corner. Kuma's is the perfect spot to eat a massive burger named after Slayer or Pantera, while Neurosis blasts over the speakers. Logan Square and Avondale are exceptionally cool neighborhoods. The same Milwaukee Avenue we walked in Wicker Park makes its way up here. Make sure to check out Reed's Local and Cole's Bar for some killer rock and roll music and cheap beer. In the nearby Avondale neighborhood, there's record breakers for you vinyl enthusiasts and Sleeping Village, a modern bar with a great patio and surprisingly large venue hidden in the back. After Logan Square and Avondale, we headed to the trio of Lincoln Park, Lakeview, and Wrigleyville, each stacked upon the other. Just across from the Lincoln Park Zoo, there's the 1,000-seat Park West Theater. Right off Lincoln Avenue, there's the aptly named Lincoln Hall, another great mid-sized venue. The Vic is more of a classic theater vibe for larger performances. And for the smaller, more intimate gigs, check out Beat Kitchen or Shuba's, an old Schlitz brewery from the turn of the century, complete with a hand-carved wooden stage. A little further north, there's the Cubby Bear. Predictably, the sports bar and music venue is Caddy Corner from Wrigley Field, home of the Chicago Cubs. But apart from its proximity to the park, the Cubby Bear is known as a legendary punk and rock and roll venue. Acts such as the Foo Fighters, Pixies, Naked Ray Gun, and Johnny Cash have graced its stage. Joe, it was really cool seeing the iconic Wrigley Field just around the corner, and now you've taken me to an iconic music venue, Metro. That's right, totally. Wrigleyville is, although probably more known for being the epicenter of the sports icon in the Chicago Cubs, it still is holding down a punk rock legacy with Metro. The Wrigleyville, Lakeview, Lincoln Park neighborhoods uh, also have some other great clubs, like the Vic, uh, Shuba's, Lincoln Hall, and also uh, right around the corner, world famous guitar store, Chicago Music Exchange. Oh, great. Wanna go play some guitars? Let's do it. Yes. All right, man. And so we made our way to Chicago Music Exchange to see one of the most impressive music showrooms in the world. We met up with our old friend, Shelby Pollard, who was kind enough to give ah, us yes. a tour. Shelby. Hey, guys. Hey, Shelby. Good, to, Good see to, see to see you. Good to see you, man. Welcome. Thank you. So yeah, this is the ever-famous Les Paul wall. 
It's an entire wall of Les Pauls. It's a beautiful, beautiful My eye always goes here first, and uh, I have the privilege to play one of your CME customs in my demo videos, and uh, it's just a thing of beauty. All these Les Pauls, Shelby, do you have, do you have a favorite? I do, actually. There's a, right now we have this 83 Reefin gold top that's just great, and it really shouldn't be. Yeah, so. you like the odd ducks. Yeah, you know, keep it weird. <laughs> Yeah, and then we have the actually much larger section of fenders. Yes. Custom shop and vintage pieces by, uh, by model and series here. Amazing. Oh, love that. So that's a, a custom shop. We have our own uh, exclusive Chicago special pickups for Jazzmasters, right. Strats, and Tellies. Amazing. So we've been working for the past couple of years to design our own guitars top to bottom, every specification that we could, and a plethora of gears and finishes, but it's really anchored around the pickup. I wanted to call it the Chicago Special because it's the opposite of the Texas Special. Awesome. So, a little more mild. Yeah, I know that you guys went to Chess Records. It's really kind of based on the records that were made there in the early 50s and the records that really ended up influencing the, the Texas Blues artists. But if Fender and Gibson aren't what you're looking for, the Music Exchange is also one of the best stocked guitar stores in the country. The acoustics room was especially impressive. Oh yeah. <laughs> this one's got a this one's got a story, I'm sure. You know, I with my last name Martin, I probably should own a Martin. So maybe we should maybe we should look at a couple of these. If you're into low end, don't miss the basement. Also, the drum exchange is right next door. Joe and I, however, were looking for something you couldn't possibly find just anywhere. So after so a little persuasion, Shelby um, was kind enough to show us to the secret vault, where the cream of the music exchange's crop is kept. And speaking of Chicago, one more fun thing before we open the vault. A really fun relaunch of an old Chicago company. Oh, Harmony. Harmony. Started in 1892 in Chicago, now back for the first time. As many vintage guitar fans will know, for many years, Chicago was home to some of the biggest instrument manufacturers in the world. Guitars from brands like Harmony and K were made in Chicago and distributed through mail order catalogs like Sears. It's said that there were more Harmonies made in the 60s than Fenders. All right, you ready? So here is our vault. Wow. Some of the things that we have in here. Real treasure of the shop is this. Oh, I can get that out oh, of the way yeah. for you. Didn't the Beatles play one of those? Yeah, She Loves You was recorded on this one. Wow, history. <laughs> this is a 1951 Reefin Telly. Wow. So technically in 51, it wouldn't really have been even a Telecaster. It would have been a no caster. No caster, yeah. Okay, right. Ooh. But we're going to call it a Telly because someone did the pleasure of putting a new logo on there that says Telecaster. The rest of the guitars in the vault were as rare and impressive as you might imagine. A 1958 Stratocaster, a 1960 ES-335 with a 345 neck, a 1959 ES-355 in ebony. But I think the last one might work best for me. So finally we have the ever famous Hello. 1960 Les Paul. Oh my goodness. Ooh. Go ahead, Andy. Oh. As we lovingly call. Scarface. Scarface. Jimmy Page, you may have heard of him before. James Page. He played in a band called the Yardbirds once. Totally. But then in another band called the Led Zeppelins. <laughs> yeah. He did a mod on his Les Paul underneath here to have onboard electronics um, and effects. And so whomever owned this did the same thing. Uh -huh. And then the top was uh, replaced. A piece of maple was put back into it. No way. Yeah. I know that you'd like to purchase this, so I'll make you a really great offer of $285,000. Three easy Of payments. a quarter of a million. <laughs> I might have to play it first, you know, just to not take a test drive.
Oh, can we just stay here? This is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Musically satisfied, at least for the moment, Joe and I headed down Belmont to Electrical Audio, another iconic Chicago recording studio. We met with head engineer and local music sage, Steve Albini, and asked his advice on what to see next. I'm gonna take you to two places. We're gonna drive kind of a long way, seven, eight miles. We're gonna to go to the Midwest Buy and Sell, which is a pawn shop that caters to musicians. Midwest Buy and Sell, the very best pawn shop because it has extremely high turnover and the people that work there are sympathetic to the local musicians. So you will find a lot of player quality instruments, that is instruments that have been in use recently. They're not gonna be some dusty garbage from somebody's attic. They're not going to be vintage, unplayed, collectible masterpieces. They're going to be working, usable instruments that you can take off the shelf and go play a gig with that night if you needed to, right? From there, I'm gonna take you to Rock and Roll Vintage, which is run by rockers, meaning that when dentists come in, they subsidize the rockers that come in. So dentists pay full whack, rockers get a deal. So I'm gonna take you to Rock and Roll Vintage where they have all kinds of and fantastic tools for rock and roll. So Joe and I wisely took Steve's advice and headed to Ravenswood. Here things were definitely a bit more quiet and residential, but even among the picturesque courtyard apartments and lush trees, we found refuge in rock and roll vintage on Damon Avenue. Awesome. Heath, I'm Joe. Hey Joe, nice to meet you. Andy. Hey Andy, nice to meet you. Thanks for having us. We're at rock and roll vintage here. Uh, well, we've been in business for 15 years. Uh, this location for four years. Uh, I actually worked at another shop in town for six years and then started this so I could be on my own. <laughs> There's plenty of variety to be found here. From vintage oddballs to tried and true classics, rock and roll vintage has an impressive spread. One heavily modified Strat caught my eye. So. Andy, did you do all these things to this guitar, or <laughs> did you? Uh, I don't know who in their right mind would do something to a 65 Strat. Yeah, it's yeah. a 65 uh, underneath. It all doesn't this. look like it. Yeah, right. They were saying these are at, this still the gray, gray bobbin single coils. They just have some covers on there. Okay. So at the heart of it is, is generally a 65, um, but there's a built-in phaser. <laughs> to put a phaser on a 65 strap. In the back of the shop, there's Synth City. The lights, knobs, and wires were a bit intimidating, but Joe and I thought we'd give it a shot anyways. There we go. So our experimental synth group wasn't quite ready for Carnegie Hall, but now wasn't the time for practice. Just a few blocks north, we found a guitar store unlike uh, the other. Hey, Mark? welcome. The, yeah, hey, Mark. Andy, nice Andy, to meet you. I'm Joe. Good to see you, Joe. Great to, nice be to here. Meet you. Yeah, likewise. Thanks, welcome Joe. to Bass Club. Bass yeah. Club, yeah, so wonderful. wonderful. Yeah, well, we started 14 years ago. Um, there really wasn't a whole lot in Chicago at the time for basses. I was a bass player looking for high quality gear. Didn't really find it, so I thought, Hey, why not open my own store? Lakeland was key. Yeah. Um, they really didn't have anybody in Chicago that represented their US brand. That's the Decade Bass. That is very unique to Lakeland, the body shape. Also, the pickups, too, are Shisonics. Those are their own types of pickups. Um, very unique. All their craftsmanship goes into that. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah local Chicago company. Thanks so much, man. This is great. Thanks for bringing us <laughs> yeah, in yeah. and showing us some bases. Yeah, thanks for stopping by. <laughs>
right, Joe, so you've taken us up north a little bit. Uh, this area definitely has more sort of an old-timey Chicago vibe. I mean, it, it, almost like it's from a different era. Why yeah. is that? This was the entertainment district for the first half of the 20th century. So there's these wonderful old theaters, the Riviera, the Aragon, the Uptown Theater. And there's also this wonderful, world-famous Green Mill. Ah, oh, nice. The Jazz Club. You've probably heard about this place. There's wonderful jazz music every night of the week here. And also, uh, it uh, was frequented by one of Chicago's most infamous people. Oh, really? Like Steve Harvey or...? Al Capone. Oh, Al Capone, okay. <laughs> There's a tunnel in the back where Al Capone used to have an escape route for him and his guys uh, during the Prohibition days. Oh, amazing. So yeah, it's got really cool history. One of my favorite shows in Chicago, probably my favorite show, is 9 p.m. Wednesday nights. Alfonso Pondicelli plays uh, it's a gypsy jazz swing guitar oh, show. Great. It's amazing. Awesome. Yeah. Well, you know, today is Wednesday. Maybe we should kill some time and then check out the show. Yeah, we definitely should do that. Awesome. Okay, cool. All right, let's keep going. Let's do it. For our last stop, we travel just beyond the northern borders of the city to the affluent lakeside suburb of Evanston. Perhaps best known as the home of Northwestern University, Evanston is also home to space an intimate upscale venue with beautiful live sound and a fully equipped recording studio in the back. And just a block away on Main Street, there's one of the oldest guitar shops in the Chicagoland area, Guitar Works LTD. Hey guys. Terry. Terry. I'm Joe. Hi Joe. Hey, Terry, Andy. Hi Andy. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having us, man. Welcome to Guitar Works. Awesome. I was working for a, another store here in Evanston that is now defunct. The guy that was running it did something that I thought was a little less than savory, and I gave him my notice, and he told me to leave right then, which I did. Okay. I had no idea what I was gonna do. Got on my BMW motorcycle and rose down here, and my bike died right down at the corner down here. There was a store with a for rent sign in the window, and I thought, I can run a store. Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> called the realtor, and an hour after I left my job, I was in business. This is the Story Guitar. It's a 1971 Martin D35. Mm -hmm. Been around the block as you can tell. Yes. It was laying on our front step and it was toast, totally toast. Back was coming off, top was what? coming off, bridge was off, pick guard was off, the accent was four inches tall. It had multiple cracks in it. The braces were all falling out. So we decided that we would re restore it. Look at that. Every single glue joint in this has been redone except the butt block and the head block. Wow, that is beautiful. Uh, what can you tell us about the actual guitars that were made in Chicago? I see some of these brands like... Oh yeah, I, I wish you'd been here a couple of years ago. I bought 180, I think it was. Chicago made guitars from a woman who was getting divorced from her husband, and he was gonna write a book about Chicago guitars, so he had national Supros, Valcos, Airlines, he had all of those, a huge collection. And I bought that whole collection, and this is a few of the ones that are left over. If you do find yourself all the way up in Evanston, consider visiting Macon Music in nearby Northfield. Originally opened in 1973 and known for its large selection of boutique amplifiers and guitars, Macon Music is a guitar-centric store, but with plenty of variety. Like any large city, Chicago is a place that's always evolving and changing. Its musical heritage, whether it be blues, soul, jazz, rock, house, or hip-hop, is all there with historical touchstones and modern manifestations waiting to be uncovered at every corner. So for our final stop of the day, Joe took me to his favorite venue, The Hideout, a classic bar and music space. Andy, it's been a great day. For the last stop, I had to bring you to my favorite Chicago venue, The Hideout, and get a beer with you. Oh, it's been such an awesome day, Joe. And 
I knew that Chicago had this rich musical history, but I had no idea about the neighborhoods, and you know, each one was so unique, and so it's just been a great learning experience, and hopefully the viewers got a good glimpse of what it's like to be a musician in Chicago. Absolutely. Thanks for coming to Chicago. Thank you. And I'll see you in the next city. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you.